Brittany Wallace stood hesitantly in front of the clearance shelves and couldn't decide what to get today. Maybe I should buy a can of pate after all. A gift like that would make my Lola so happy. The girl smiled at the thought of her beloved striped pet. Brittany picked up the sweetheart cat outside when the poor thing was surrounded by a pack of stray dogs. Ever since then, Lola had become an integral part of the family and had always been a loyal helper to her owner. It's worth mentioning that in spite of her financial difficulties, Brittany always took good care of her pet and never treated her badly. Even now, the girl went into the supermarket just so she can get Lola something for dinner. Since Brittany was strapped for cash, she picked out a carton of milk that her cat loved so much. Much to the girl's disappointment, when she got to the cashier, she had discovered only a handful of change in her pocket. She placed the carton of milk on the cash register and started counting her money while mouthing silently. Since there were many shoppers at this time of day and the place was busy, a small line quickly formed behind the girl. How much longer will I have to wait? If you have no money, don't come to the store and waste other people's time, the cashier lady said. Hold on, hold on. I'll just be a second. Just a couple more cents, said Brittany, embarrassed. At that moment, one of the more impatient shoppers accidentally knocked the girl's elbow, which caused the change to fall from her hand like silver rain all over the supermarket floor. So now we have to wait another half an hour for you, the cashier shouted angrily. The grumpy cashier's name was Dorothy Parker, and she was in a bad mood that morning. It was because last night she got into a fight with her husband, who came home tipsy again. Meanwhile, Brittany was dying of embarrassment as she desperately tried to pick up the change off the floor, while the other shoppers watched her judgmentally from a distance. At that very moment, the store's director appeared in the store and looked with clear condemnation at the crowd that formed at the cashier. What's the matter, Dorothy? Are you having some problems? asked the director in an even, calm tone. No, Mr. Dawson, it's just this poor girl. She's struggling to pick up her change. She ought to be kicked out, so she wouldn't get in the way of other visitors again, said Dorothy, blushing with embarrassment. To the cashier's great surprise, the director did not kick the girl out, but instead, he started picking up the change with her. Thank you, sir. You really shouldn't have. I could have managed myself, mumbled Brittany, embarrassed. No need to thank me, miss. It's no trouble at all, replied Benjamin Dawson. Picking up the change off the floor, the director didn't see anything shameful in helping the poor girl. But in a couple of minutes, Mr. Dawson saw something on the girl's wrist that immediately made him break into a sweat. The thing was that Brittany was sporting a gold bracelet on her wrist, the value of which Benjamin Dawson remembered down to a cent. I beg your pardon, miss. I apologize for my curiosity, but how did you get this bracelet? Don't worry, if it doesn't belong to you, I won't report it to the police, asked the director, worried. This bracelet belonged to my late mother. She passed away three years ago. And so it's of high sentimental value to me. Why is it of such interest to you? Brittany responded with the question. To the girl's great surprise, the director pretended not to hear her last words and asked one of the employees to put together a large bag of groceries for him. Then, clutching the bulky bag in his arm, Benjamin Dawson handed it over to the confused girl. You don't need to, sir. I don't have the money to pay for all these groceries, Brittany whispered, looking down guiltily. Take it, it's a gift. Compensation for the inconvenience we caused you, said Mr. Dawson, looking expressively at the cashier lady. Benjamin looked no older than 45, and he could have passed off as the confused Brittany's father. How about you allow me to give you a ride home? I promise I won't try to invite myself over or ask uncomfortable questions. The director asked gingerly. Brittany smiled and nodded affirmatively in response. On the way to Brittany's house, Benjamin learned that the girl never knew her father and that her mother had died of cancer three years ago. The man first got suspicious when Brittany mentioned her home address. The thing was, Benjamin had already heard it before and understood that coincidences like this didn't just happen in life. 
But when Brittany casually mentioned that her mother's name was Suzanne Wallace, the director barely managed to control the commotion that took over him. No, this cannot be a coincidence. I can't be mistaken, especially with the bracelet. I gave it to Suzanne myself not long before we broke up, thought Benjamin, stopping at the house on Main Street, in which he hadn't been in in over 20 years. Still tormented by doubt, Benjamin Dawson helped the girl take the bag of groceries inside the house. Then, politely declining the offer to come in for a cup of tea, the director said a respectful goodbye and drove home. Benjamin knew that based on her age, the girl could have easily been his daughter, and this crazy thought literally paralyzed the director's conscience. The truth was that he and Suzanne broke up before the girl chose someone else over Benjamin. And what's worse is that it was Benjamin's own brother whom Suzanne chose 20 years ago. After the cheating-related scandal, he fell out with his family and moved to Boston. Moreover, John broke off ties with his mother and brother, and the word is he started a brand new life. In turn, Benjamin couldn't confidently say whether the incident with Suzanne and his brother could be considered cheating. The couple wasn't married at the time and could do whatever they wanted with their lives. DNA test. How did I not think of that before? I need to get something that belongs to Brittany and run the test. Benjamin whispered, confident in his own right. However, deep down, the successful businessman was already confident that the test result would confirm Brittany to be his daughter. This was explained by the fact that Benjamin saw painfully similar facial features and personality traits in Brittany from the minute he met her. In order to quietly take something from Brittany's personal belongings, the director came up with the clever scheme, which if successful, would get rid of any doubts. That is why Benjamin started helping Brittany with groceries, and a week after they first met, he offered the girl a managerial position at his store. I don't even know how to thank you, Brittany said, looking down, embarrassed. Meanwhile, having turned her back to Benjamin, the girl didn't see how her guest stealthily took her hairbrush and hid it in his shirt. I don't need anything from you, Brittany. It's just that you remind me of someone who I was once very close with. This is why I'd like to help you, said Benjamin, pressing the coveted trophy to his chest. He had to wait for the results for about two weeks. By the time Benjamin Dawson finally received the envelope with the medical institution's stamp, he was 100% sure that he could predict the result. Imagine the businessman's surprise when he saw that the official conclusion stated that Brittany wasn't his daughter after all. How could this be? Why? But I could feel that Brittany is my daughter, whispered Benjamin, clutching the odious letter. The businessman needed no less than two days before he could come to terms with and digest the obtained information. It was then that Benjamin decided to tell Brittany everything. Naturally, the girl's initial reaction was shock. Benjamin didn't know how to handle the worry that came over him and carefully hugged the shaken girl around her shoulders. Even though you're not my real daughter, I'd like to consider you as one. From now on, you can call me father and use all the privileges that this right gives you, whispered Benjamin with tears in his eyes. The businessman's haggard face read that such a fateful decision was very hard for him to make. But on the other hand, Benjamin was very exhausted from loneliness and he always wanted to have a person in his life whom would hand him a glass of water when he was old. And even though Brittany was not his daughter, he understood that her mother was the woman whom he once loved so much. Of course, many of those who knew Benjamin were judgmental of such a reckless decision and thought that he made a mistake by calling Brittany his daughter. Meanwhile, Benjamin Dawson still couldn't let go of the feeling that he had missed some very important detail. Mulling over it every day, the man found himself thinking that he liked the idea of considering Brittany his heiress. The girl had also completely transformed, having become a confident and successful woman who made men's heads turn. One time, looking at family photos with this adopted daughter, Benjamin came across an old photo of his brother, John. 
It was dated to be 20 years old and involuntarily reminded the businessman of the fact that Brittany's late mother dated both brothers at once. Benjamin couldn't really judge her because at the time, he himself was a rash and reckless young man. Maybe I should go and see John after all. The last time we saw each other, we were still at university, thought Benjamin, still clutching the photo of his brother, who was only three years younger than him. This thought seemed very promising to the businessman. This was because he couldn't remember when he said two words to John, even over the phone. Having made such an important decision for himself, Benjamin headed to Boston the next morning. The businessman quickly found the house he was looking for. It looked dilapidated and extremely miserable from the outside. My brother couldn't possibly be living in this wreck, could he? Thought Benjamin with doubt in his voice. But when the businessman came up to the door and knocked, he almost immediately heard someone's shuffling footsteps. To Benjamin's surprise, a tearful woman in black mourning clothes appeared on the doorstep. Hello, how can I help you, sir? Asked the lady of the house. Benjamin was confused for a moment and then timidly said, I'm looking for John Dawson. The thing is, I I'm his brother. After hearing the businessman's words, the woman in the black dress covered her eyes with their hands and burst into tears. As it turned out, John Dawson had died of leukemia half a year before. Even so, on his deathbed, more than anything in the world, the man wanted to ask his elder brother for forgiveness, as he was guilty before him. Unfortunately, John Dawson hadn't managed to do this and died three days before his birthday. Having found out about this, Benjamin leaned against the door and wept quietly. Of course, he didn't blame his brother, and deep down he knew that he had forgiven him long ago. Having gotten himself together, Benjamin asked the late John's wife for something from his personal belongings. Then, the businessman visited the brother's grave and went to the medical center to settle the question that had been bothering him once and for all. And once again, the days dragged on. They were filled with anxiety and anticipation of the test results. Meanwhile, in conversation with his adopted daughter, the businessman didn't say a word about his trip to Boston. But when Benjamin finally got the DNA test results, the doctor's verdict was univocal. Thus, with 99.9% .9 probability, John Dawson was the father of Brittany Wallace. Rereading the text over and over again with tears in his eyes, Benjamin was more and more convinced that his hunch was correct and Brittany was indeed his family wherein the businessman swore to himself that he will never leave his late brother's family and will do everything possible to make them happy.